Hello, welcome to another virtual D8 Youth Workshop this morning. Hi, my name is Terry Fender, your District 8 Director. Just a few days ago, we had Judge Joe Marshall speaking on uh, Silvers. We're back this morning with another topic and another speaker. Uh, we're going to be taking a virtual trip out to Pennsylvania to see a judge that's noted for being a top-notch judge of Polish as well as a very good breeder of Polish as well. We're going to shoot off to him and then after he's done we'll come back to me for some closing comments. With that said, Mr. John Graybeal, take it away my friend. Hi Terry, how are you? It's good to see you and it's good to see everyone here uh, on Facebook and, and uh, doing this virtual meeting. Um, this is a little new to everybody, uh, not to District 8. You've been doing it for a while and I think that's wonderful. Uh, it is a sign of our new world and, and uh, things that are uh, happening right now. And I'm truly glad to, to be able to participate. I, I wanna thank Terry and Amanda both for organizing this and for inviting me to speak. Um, I, I love uh, rabbits in general, and uh, I particularly am, am passionate about a, a few things, one of them being the Polish rabbit. And I'm going to share some things with you, um, or at least try to, to do this virtually and uh, convince you of, of a few things concerning Polish rabbits and uh, how to evaluate them. So if uh, we could have the next slide, please. Thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, the, through this presentation, I really have, have five goals that I want to uh, accomplish. I want to just review real quickly uh, a few what I consider to be high points concerning the Polish breed standard. And then we're going to delve into uh, the breed it, itself a little bit more. We're going to talk about the schedule of points. and and something that I say about the schedule of points, it, it really is to all of you who are new and experienced, uh, that really is your guide for balancing your evaluation of any breed, but particularly we'll, we'll talk about the Polish rabbit. And then we're going to talk something that I don't want to take credit for, but I, I think that uh, it's not talked about quite as commonly as it should be, uh, but we're going to talk about the Polish front end uh, and then the Polish back end. Uh, and then we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the difference between the Polish breed and um, the Netherland dwarf, which is um, sometimes confused, not quite as commonly today as what it used to be, but it is still um, potential for confusion. So, um, <clears throat> Amanda, if you could give me the next slide. Thank you so much. The Polish standard, really, there's, there's a general description, but it can be summarized simply by saying that it is a short, compact breed that's fine-boned with a bold head and a bold eye, a very short, thick ear that's well set up on top of the head. And if you keep that in mind, if you keep that, that general description in mind, you can do a lot to evaluate your Polish. <clears throat> There's one thing in that general description that I want to just take one second and pull everyone's attention to. It's kind of unique in, in the rabbit world to be a fine-boned rabbit with a bold head, an eye, and a thick ear. Normally, bold heads and thick ears go with medium to heavy bones. We talk about that a lot, particularly in some breeds like the Dutch. Even the Netherland Dwarf has a bolder bone and the Holland Lock. We talk about them being, having heavier, being well boned. But in the Polish, you really want that fine bone, um, particularly in the feet and legs, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, next. Some notes that are pointed out at the very beginning of the Polish standard. Um, please, when you're evaluating them, don't flatten them out. Don't allow them to stretch out. We'll talk about that a little bit when we get some animals out and, and actually try to do some virtual hands-on. 
Um, the other thing that is a, a big do not do is do not cover up the head. That is in many ways the, the, the key to this breed. And so many times uh, people evaluating the Polish rabbit will cover that head up and, and hide all of that importance. And we'll again talk about that. Um, and it's noted in the, in the Polish standard that the alert Polish will present that all important head, ears, and eyes in a natural position. And what that really gets down to is don't overpose them. And, and we'll, we'll again talk about that when we get some, uh, some animals out and do a little bit of a hands-on. Uh, next, please. And the other thing that's really important to note is that the ideal weight for your Polish is two and a half pounds. And when I think of ideal weight, I think of that as being, that's the goal. That's really the, the epitome. The, there are no points allotted to weight, but if you're given two animals that are perfectly uniform and exactly the same, but one is closer to that ideal weight, that should be the animal that's considered to be your, your winner. Um, but the maximum weight does go up to three and a half pounds and you'll see an awful lot of really good specimens in that upper weight range. You, you shouldn't uh, just automatically eliminate them from your evaluation just because they're slightly bigger. Um, okay, next slide, please. So as we said, the, the schedule of points is, is really your guide to evaluating uh, the breed. And, and it breaks things down, as, as I'm sure you're well aware, into body and, and head and ears and color and fur. But uh, next slide. We're going to talk specifically today, we're going to spend some time on that general type. 75% of the rabbit, the evaluation of the rabbit, really is in that general type. That's in no way to discount the importance of fur and color and of course condition, but so much is in that general type and, and it does create some confusion amongst some people that are evaluating Polish. Um, next slide, please. So this is a little pie chart. I do, I do these, this, let me back up. A lot of these figures you're going to see actually come from the American Polish Rabbit Club's guidebook, which is an excellent book um, for understanding the breed. But uh, pie charts are something that I rough out every time I'm getting ready to judge any breed at a large show. It helps me uh, balance that evaluation. And here we're going to talk about the body, the head, the ears, the eyes, the feet and leg, and the tail. And as you can see from the pie chart, if you consume all of that, you've gotten a whole lot of that pie and you've consumed and you've evaluated a whole lot. Um, next slide. You'll see from looking at this pie chart that the, and, and as we remember from the uh, schedule of points, that the body is 25 points. That's more than the head, which is 15, and the ears, which is 15, and the eyes, which is 15. And they're more than the feet and legs, which is four, and the tail, which is one. So that is one way of looking at the distribution of these points. But you'll see it's fairly close between the body and the head and the ears and the eyes. Next slide, please. But if you take and you think about this rabbit, as a front end, meaning the head and the ears and the eyes, and the back end of this rabbit, meaning the body and the feet and the legs and the tail, you really have a 45 points to 30 points distribution. That lines things up slightly differently than, than the way we line them up above. Next slide, please. No matter how you cut it, no matter how you think about this, it is really a balanced distribution of points throughout that general type description. I like to put things together in that front end versus back end 
because it helps me focus as I'm evaluating. I can look at the head and the ears and the eyes, and then I can look at the body and put things into perspective. Next slide. So we'll talk about the front end. It's unique. It is the only breed that has 45 points all attributed in front of the neck on, this, on, on the rabbit. The head is supposed to be short and medium full. It's supposed to have full cheeks and a full muzzle. Next, please. Next. It's supposed to be slightly curved from the base of the ear down to the muzzle. That curvature is well displayed in this picture here. Next slide. It's supposed to have slight roundness, particularly we're talking about the roundness between the eyes. Now it's hard to see that in a two dimensional picture, but you'll have to give me some uh, credit and say that, that that roundness is important. They're not to be flat and they're not to be concave. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Next slide, please. You're specifically supposed to fault the Polish head for being flat or concave. And you'll hear me talk about that when I'm evaluating Polish rabbits. It's sometimes missed by, by some people, but that section between the eyes should not be indented. And you can, next slide, you can see that right there where that arrow is pointing on that, this rabbit there's a, a concavity, it's caused because of the rabbit having some eyebrows like you would see in Britannia Petites that are actually called out to please have them. The Polish, we don't want to see that. And it creates a challenge for the Polish breeder to create the big bold eye that we want without and still maintaining the roundness in that forehead. Next slide, please. We'll talk about the ear. We want that to be a small, next slide, small, well-formed ear. It's supposed to be a really good substance. You want a thick ear. You don't want to be able to see through it or have light shine through it. It's supposed to be slightly round at the tip and slightly rounded throughout. This picture really depicts a nice shape to that ear. But one of the things I want to mention as we talk about the ear. There are 15 points there, but there's a lot that goes into the good Polish ear. So you have to balance how you're going to fault the animal if it's not the perfect ear. Next slide. One of the other things that's really important to the Polish rabbit is that that ear is carried erect up on top of its head in the 12 o'clock position, right? Just right behind that eye. It should be faulted somewhat for an ear that is carried low down to the body beyond that one o'clock position. Um, next slide. That, that low carried ear really is something that we try to eliminate in the, in the Polish rabbit. Next slide. Another characteristic, and all of this is wrapped up into the 15 points. You want that ear set close together. You want them to be right beside each other all the way up to the tip. You want the next slide to not show flanges. Now, what are flanges? It's that piece of that ear behind, that is in the back of the ear. You don't, from the, when you're looking at them from the front, you don't want to see that. That should be hidden behind the ear. And then you want to remember that there is a disqualification for ears that are over three inches in length. And equally importantly, the length of that ear should match the size of the rabbit. If you have a little bit bigger, that three and a half pound, that three and a quarter pound Polish, they can get away with an ear that gets close to three inches and still maintain the balance that you're looking for. Next slide. The other part that goes into the, the Polish front end 
is, is the, the eye. And you want a large, bold, bright eye that's expressive. You can see if, if you look just at this rabbit's eye, it's a large, it, on, on the size of that head, it's a large eye and it's a bright expressive eye. You wanna be careful to evaluate that very, very, very closely. Next slide. So you put all of those things together and you've got a 45 point uh, animal. But then you have to take into consideration that back end. It, it's not to be forgotten. And in fact, I would say it's to be remembered. You, you can't have a really good head on a poorly typed body. That animal is not going to be functional. It's not going to thrive and do well in your, in your rabbitry. You want a short, compact, close coupled body that is rounded through the hips that is medium width throughout that body. You want the high point over the center of the hips. Next, please. So many times you'll see the high point in the center of the rabbit that creates an almost half moon shape body type. And you really don't want that. You want that high point moved back over the center part of that hip. I'd even personally move it a little bit further back than what that line depicts, but I'd be happy with it at that dashed line. That's really the proper location. And a lot of that goes into how you pose the rabbit. It's really important, as we talked about earlier, that they're allowed to pose naturally. Um, and sometimes this hindquarter shape is hidden or distorted by animals being shoved together. And, and uh, we'll, when we get rabbits out, we'll talk about that a little bit. Next slide, please. So one of the things, one of the final things I wanna talk about is the differences between the Polish and the Netherlands dwarf. And you really should know the differences for your, as a breeder and as, as a registrar or judge you really don't want to get confused by these two things. Oftentimes people have in the past been crossing Polish and Netherland dwarfs together. And so there's a lot of characteristics of the dwarf breed that have been carried over into the Polish that we're working really hard to eliminate. And one of the things in the Polish standard that's described very clearly is that they're to be faulted for a dwarf type head. And I would say to you that dwarf type head means round in all directions. As you see in that picture, the dwarf head really is round like a ball. And it's thought of as you're judging them to be fully rounded. That is not the Polish head that you want. You want a head that is um, more oval. It has roundness to it but it's not circular in its fashion. The other thing you don't want is you don't want a head that sits high up on top of the shoulders. I don't want you to confuse that though with an animal that happens to be curious and is looking around. That does not mean that the head is set high up on top of the shoulder. You, you have seen good Netherlands dwarfs posed and you should See, you'll see some Polish rabbits that are posed and you, you don't want that, uh, that head way up on top of the shoulder. Next slide, please. The other thing that really differentiates the Polish and the Netherland dwarf is the fur. And the fur structure, I said we weren't gonna talk about it very much, but we're gonna talk about it here briefly. The fur on the Polish is supposed to be short with a flyback coat. That means it's supposed to be crisp and brisk in its return to its natural position. And in fact, the Polish standard calls for a disqualification for a rollback coat. Your Netherland dwarf actually wants a rollback coat. So those are two, that's a, that's a very important difference between the two. And, Often something that is missed on the judging table. Um, I will say though, you have to be careful not to 
interpret an animal that's in poor coat condition with an animal that has a rollback coat. You can really only evaluate that when the coats are in good condition and they're lively and fresh. And the final thing, next slide please. The final thing I wanna talk about in this slide presentation is something that's near and dear to my heart. People that have seen me judge Polish rabbits will know this and it's something that Polish breeders really should be paying careful attention to. This quote um, is actually written in 1957 by um, J Jimmy Blythe, who was at that time uh, secretary in the ARBA and a very distinguished judge, Polish breeder, and one of the founding fathers, if you will, of the Polish breed in America. Um, he, he wrote in this article that the Polish <clears throat> should be evaluated with particularly no neck that will form a, a, a rough or collar where the neck meets the body that many people mistake for a dewlap. It's what some of us old timers refer to as a pencil line under the chin and should not be confused with a dewlap. And here's the important part. If you run your fingers over this, you'll find that it is made up by a distortion of hair. In my way of thinking, that is not a disqualification. And in fact, our standard says to allow for a pencil line. And here's the take home. A dewlap is made up of folds of skin. And that is a disqualification. And you'll see me and, and many judges when they're evaluating Polish rabbits. If there appears to be a dewlap, we'll touch it. We'll actually see, is there skin there? And if there's skin there, it's a disqualification and that animal should be eliminated. Next, please. As I said, this was a quote written in 1957 by Jimmy Blythe that's over 60 years, it's still true. And it's still an issue today. Remember, dewlaps are disqualifications. Next, please. That really ends the slides that I, I had and, and is a high point of, of really the um, breakdown on the Polish rabbit. I'm gonna rearrange my, my desk here. Hopefully people can still see this and we're gonna get out a couple of rabbits. This is a little black buck that admittedly has some problems, but he's got a few things that I really like and I wanted to point out to you. When he's not squinting, he's got a very nice eye. He's got that correct ear carriage. It's up on top of his head, right at 12 o'clock. A habit you wanna get out of as you're evaluating these rabbits, you don't wanna do this. Don't pet their eyes down excuse me, don't pet their ears down. You want them up. And as a judge, you wanna actually encourage that to be up slightly. Now you'll see this, I picked this rabbit up, I put him down and he is posed naturally. That's where I would like him to be posed at. That hind leg is right underneath that stifle joint. That's his natural length. This is not something you should be doing to a Polish rabbit. You're covering up the head you're losing that beautiful 45 points and you're squishing them up and you're changing the way that body looks. Pose them quite naturally. Of course, you wanna tuck your feet underneath them where they belong and give them a chance to look attractive, but pose them naturally and run your hand up through their ear just to encourage them to set that ear where it belongs. One of the things I really like about this rabbit, and the reason I wanted to bring him up, that's a flyback coat. It's a short coat, it snaps back into position. That's really important in these Polish rabbits. I'm gonna turn him around, he's a black rabbit. It's a little hard to evaluate that head. But you'll see it's round 
in all aspects. It's got some fullness in that lower muzzle. I'm gonna get a rabbit out here now. This guy does not have the fullness in that muzzle. This is commonly seen, but actually should be discouraged in this head. You'll see how it comes down almost triangular in that lower muzzle. <clears throat> it should be round and full in that lower muzzle. This guy, when you let him pose in his natural position, he's got that ear set that's a little low. That ear goes more at one o'clock, even a little below that. And he's, his body, when you put him naturally, you can evaluate that he's a little long made through that shoulder, just a little longer made in that overall body type. Doesn't quite have that snap and fly to that coat that you have. It's not a rollback, but it doesn't quite have that snap and fly that you'd like to see in a Polish coat. So um, that's really what I have for you. I tried to make it as complete as I could and as, as full uh, as I was able to, but yet also not consume the entire morning. I could talk if people want to, I could talk about the Polish rabbit all morning long. But uh, I think at this point, we'll open it up for questions, if there are any, um, and I'll turn it back to Terry for that. I guess I had a question too, I was gonna ask on the uh, pencil line, but man, you really beat me to it there and covered that really well. Uh, really like the way you covered that. I guess maybe just something I was thinking of, it's something how the Polish have changed over the years. I mean, when I got my judge's license about 30 years ago, how the collars of the varieties have changed. Used to, it was about all ruby-eyed white, and now we see so many of the blacks and the brokens and like that. Yes, that's, um, that is something that is, is nice and, and you'll see the blacks, uh, you see an awful lot of brokens. Um, one word of caution on the brokens is of course to make sure you're allowing for an adequate amount of color on that, on that body. So many of them are, are being shown with very, very lightly colored rabbits. Um, and and uh, Fingers crossed, we'll soon have another new variety. Uh, some breeders have been doing wonderful work on breeding lilacs, and um, we'll, uh, we'll hope that they are approved very shortly. It's sort of a natural fit with chocolate, blue, black, to have a lilac variety. Sounds good, yes. Uh, Amanda, do you have any questions coming in there or anybody checking in where they're from? Um, I don't have any questions right this moment. Um, but I do have people that are chiming in. It says that they're from, I think I had an Indonesia that did a like on us. Um, and we've got Missouri, we've got some New Jersey, um, I think Indiana, Pennsylvania, Tennessee. Um, did some watching. There's a Michigan again. As far as people are out there um, mm. picking and chiming in. Like I said, so uh, far I do not have any questions that are popping up. Amanda was the uh, Pennsylvania chicken. Was that Mrs. Graybeal? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, it was not Mrs. Graybeal. <laughs> okay. Um, her name was Karen. Ah. And I have an Indiana that just popped in that said hello that they were watching. Excellent, excellent. Would, well, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to take it that there aren't any questions. That means I either totally covered everything or totally lost everybody, one or the other. <laughs> uh, uh, hopefully it's, it's the former and not the latter. Hopefully people um, were able to get something from that. And, um, We'll uh, give them a moment if there are any other que if there are any questions at all. Um, I'd be happy to entertain them, and I'd also be more than happy to talk offline if people think of questions later. Um, my email address is very easy to remember. 
It's rabbitfarm at yahoo.com. Um, it's, uh, it's, I'd be more than happy to discuss things offline if people do have any questions there uh, as well. Yeah, John, I, I really like the way that you covered the, the front end, the, uh, the 45 points on that, you know, head, ear, and eye there and not covering up that because, I mean, you do that and you're covering up almost half the points. And I like the way that you stress that. And that's something that's always in the back of my mind. Yeah, it, it's, um, it, it's a common thing that's, um, I, don't, I don't want to use the word mistake, but it's a common habit that judges have. They're so, so quick to sort of cover that head up and, and pose that rabbit. That's often how we do it with, you know, other breeds of rabbit. Um, but when you do that, you've, you've completely distorted those 45 all important points. Um, and and it, it just does take a little bit of a retraining of your hands and, and to think just a little bit differently about evaluating the Polish rabbit. And that's the other thing in the, in the standard where we, we call out that they're to um, be posed in their natural position. That gives the judge the opportunity to um, not force and fight and carry on with them uh, and not shove their hind legs up into their um, front legs. Good. Amanda, any questions coming in? Um, I do not have any questions that came in, but I do have Marty from Alabama that says to hi to John. I bet that was Marty as in Marty Dale? No, uh, could that well is, be. That is correct. <laughs> hey, Marty. <laughs> All right. I'd say there's no questions right now because John, I think you covered just about everything there. Very impressive. And uh, I was going to tell the folks and we have you at our, uh, at our club show, usually the Polish people's right up there requesting you to do the animals. So that's one reason I wanted to make sure and uh, see if you talk on them today. They're always impressed with your judging and I always hear good things about you. And I thank you for spending some of your time with us this morning. Well, thank you so much for having me, Terry. I really appreciate it. I love the opportunity to talk about rabbits just in general, but particularly Polish. And, and as Marty would know, I also love to talk about Dutch rabbits as well. But mm -hmm. as the case in point today is Polish, and, and I, I love to chat about them. Thank you for having me. Uh, we're glad to. We're glad to here. Uh, I've got some announcements that I do want to uh, go over here before we... Uh, call it quits for the day. Uh, as uh, you probably saw last night, the uh, Pennsylvania folks did make an announcement about the, uh, the live version of the convention being canceled because of all the issues going on. Uh, but it's a very good group out there, a lot of good people, a lot of experience, and they're working on some virtual opportunities. Uh, please uh, be sure and uh, check back often to them because I know they're working hard for you. And there was also some stuff put out on the uh, uh, ARBA uh, Facebook and website about some of the issues that the board will be uh, working on right now. A lot of it's due to the uh, current health situation. So uh, please check back often to the ARBA site. And of course, we share it here on the District 8 site to try and uh, keep you all updated. So please uh, check back often. Uh, I want to say some thanks right now, of course. Uh, we've got John here that spent his time with us. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, we've got my D8 web team here, Amanda Behe and uh, Jane Burt. They put in a lot of time. Amanda does practice sessions for us. She works on the PowerPoints. And of course, she does the same stuff with her 4-H club. So uh, she's hard at work right there. Uh, Jane Burt uh, is serving as our webmaster and our uh, District 8 e-newsletter editor. Uh, right now, Jane is working on the May issue of our District 8 newsletter. Plus, she's putting out some flyers for us for these events, and uh, both uh, Jane and Amanda do a very good job for me, and I want to say thank you to them. And, of course, I want to say thank you, everybody, for tuning in here. Uh, you're the reason we're doing this. Uh, normally, these uh, events are live after the sh before the show start, but, of course, uh, our show season's been uh, drastically affected, so uh, we're doing these uh, 
virtual workshops to try and fill in until we get the shows back. Uh, everybody across the ARBA is welcome, just not District 8. Plus, we welcome all the 4-H kids and the FFA members in here, too. We're glad to have you. Uh, please remember to check back to our District 8 YouTube channel. Uh, this event, along with the other events, are being recorded and put on there so everyone can check them out later. The YouTube channel was called ARBA D8 Website. Please check back often. We have uh, these virtual events, plus several of the videos from the last fall's uh, live events there. So please check them out and hopefully you'll find them interesting and entertaining. Uh, we've got, a, we're working now out uh, in the future, scheduling more of these virtual workshops. June, we've already got scheduled. I think we have a nice slate of workshops scheduled there. And actually we're working right now on July, getting some events scheduled in July. Now, uh, I'm not going to announce all of the events we have because these strange times, you don't know what might happen. And uh, plus, you know, keep you coming back a little bit in suspense as well. But I'm going to announce a couple of the uh, upcoming events right now. And I think there's some good topics, some good speakers. Uh, we're going to take just a little time off to give our web team a little time to rest up. And if we didn't do that, if we didn't do that, I'd be afraid they might want to raise. We can't have that right now. So uh, June the 4th at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, June the 4th, we've got one of our younger and our new judges uh, taking part. This would be Judge Rachel Pinnerman from Wisconsin. And for our wool people out there, I think you're going to like this. It's called Angora Breeds and Wool Evaluation. Angora Breeds and Wool Evaluation. So please check in then June 4th at seven. And the one after that is June the 8th at seven o'clock. And that'll be going out to California again. We started there, now we're heading back. That is Judge Melissa McGee. And she'll be talking on Himalayans and the role of climate control. Here in District 8, we used to have a lot of Himalayans and we don't see them as much as we used to, but I think this will be a really good topic. And it just doesn't apply to the Himalayans, but for a lot of us pointed white, like my Californians that I breed, climate control, you know, that can affect them there too. So I think that'll touch on more than just the Himalayans for everybody there. So I just wanted to promote those events. We'll have some flyers out on our, uh, on our website and Facebook channel very, very soon on that there too. So I think I've covered just about everything we needed to. Again, John, thank you. Amanda, Jane, thank you. And thank you to everybody out there right now. Stay safe, and we hope to see you back here on June the 4th. Bye-bye.